Hello everybody, it's Donna here from Blind and Knitting. Hope you're all well and enjoying whether you're in winter or whether you're in summer, enjoying the season for knitting in those seasons. Um, I've had an interesting couple of weeks and so I'm going to fill you in on that. I've got an FO to tell you about, a whip that is getting near to becoming an FO, so that's exciting, and uh, some other whips that I'm working on and some some things that I'm thinking of creating and doing. So it's been a busy, well it hasn't actually, I'll fill you in in my fortnight because it's been, a, boy it's been a fortnight. Uh, I hope you're all well um, and I welcome to everyone who's new but also welcome to anyone who's a returning viewer. I hope you obviously, well I'm hoping you've enjoyed what I give. Um, I thoroughly enjoy giving my stories and, and talking to you and I've, I've made some really amazing, wonderful friends from this knitting community and I, I thank all my friends and peoples in this community but I've also had some quite a few, really um, quite a few, considerable new, uh, um, what do you call it, um, subscribers and so yeah I'm looking forward to to uh, talking with you as well. I'm losing my words, aren't I? Um, I think you might notice I'm in a new place. <laughs> if you look at the background, I'm not in my normal place. I'm feeling really rested. I've had a, a really, really quiet week in a bit where I've just sat and knit and had the fire going. And I'll fill you in why as we as we talk, because it's my wee Kenzie's not been well and yeah, well, she's not so wee, she's over 30 kilos. <laughs> but anyway, I'll fill you in on that along the story. Uh, if you like this podcast, please like and subscribe. So click the thumbs up, click subscribe and leave me a comment. I, I do try and respond to all my comments. I um, really enjoy communicating with you all. But if you, if you thumbs up and subscribe, it helps... And you probably hear this so many times, it's like blah, 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 blah. But it helps with the algorithms and helps get my podcast out there. So blind and knitting. I am legally blind. I have just a tiny bit of sight about the size of my palm. And even that's not great and, and depending on light and all sorts of things. But um, you work with what you've got. I'm a social worker. I have been for over 35 years. And I am a nana of seven, a mum of two. And I have my guide dog, Kenzie. If you want to know a little bit more about Kenzie, you can follow her on Facebook. She's got her own Facebook page. I know, I know. Uh, Kenzie got the guide dog, and I also introduced her in my last podcast. This is podcast 34. It's 24th of July. What's with that? This year is just screaming past. But uh, it's been miserable weather, absolute, we're in the depth of our winter, uh, so, but I'm really enjoying that, I'm loving, loving, loving getting back into my knitting again, I had 15 years of menopause where I just couldn't wear anything more than a t-shirt, and now I'm just looking, the minute I wake up, it's like, oh, what jersey can I wear, what cardigan can I wear, what layers can I wear, because I, I can, and I'm really enjoying that, it's revigorated my love for knitting, um, again, I've always enjoyed knitting all my life, but it has really reinvigorated it. I've got a plan to knit something for my partner, but I'm just at the moment, it's like all I want is these just big, warm, comfy jerseys. So what I'm wearing today, I knit this years and years ago, I think probably, how many years ago? Eight, nine years ago. It's, oh, I'll take this off so you can see. It's just a good old patterns, old fashioned uh, it was knit in the in pieces. It's a raglan uh, knit top up, you know, in the old in the old way we used to knit it. It's skeins wool, skeins vintage DK, and it's, it's a wool I've knit a lot of jerseys out of. And I'll talk more about it because I'm knitting with it again. It's um, just one of those jerseys that it never it ne it never changes. Every time I pick it up out of the wardrobe, it's the same size. It fits. It's comfortable. It doesn't scratch, but it's a hundred percent wool, so it's so it's comfy. You know, I think the old-fashioned way of the pieces. There's some shaping issues there, but 
hey-ho, I wear scarves all the time. Uh, so I really like this. I can't remember the number of the, the name of the colour. Something like something like rose, something like that. And it is. It's this, it's I just love the colour. It's this sort of old fashioned vintage rose colour, pink rose. And uh, so I'll yeah, put my scarf back on because it is. Uh, although I'm not cold, it's just I like wearing scarves. That's just who I am. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's my knits that I'm wearing. I'm also wearing socks, uh, knitted socks that I made many years ago. So I've got the many years ago stuff on today. Because I'm not going to work today, I'm having a day at home. And so I've just got my sort of comfy stuff on for winter. Uh, this, these socks, are, I'm not going to put my foot up to show you because I'll knock you off. And I've done it before. If you, <laughs> if you follow me, you'll know I've done it before. So I don't want to knock you off. But they are old-fashioned socks again. They've got a seam up the back, so they're not knit in circular. They were knit on um, ordinary long needles. Uh, they are wheels, wagons to go, wheels to go. Fibre to go, big pattern, fibre to go, uh, full ply nylon wool uh, flecked, and I, I live in them. They're just really comfortable, really warm. You can't beat a woolen sock. And what I have noticed now that I'm back into my wools and can tolerate the warmth, because I couldn't before, is I'd forgotten how much of a pleasure they are to wear. You know, they breathe, you don't need to wash them all the time, they are... Um, you know, they you just air them out and then they put them away. Oh, so it's just such a lovely thing to wear. And yeah, boy, I'm getting back into it and enjoying it. So, oh, what's been happening? Well, it's been two weeks since I podcast. And I was feeling pretty jaded because we had had our knitting retreat. We'd had five Capital Fibre Festival. I'd had two nights, two days in Christchurch working for um, CCS Disability Action and it was just bang 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 and really busy. It was also quite a busy time at work with funding and grants and applications so I, I needed to step off the treadmill and my sister was going to Australia for a couple of weeks and she said oh, can you house sit? And I said yeah, yeah I'll house, or house and dog, she, their, dog um, their dog Bailey and so I said yeah that'll be a good idea I can come and stay at Trudy's and house sit. So I've been at Trudy's for two weeks, uh, just after our last podcast, I went, come here, and, but unfortunately, I know this is a knitting podcast, but I'm going to talk about this anyway, because oh, I've got to get it off my chest. Um, so I came on the Monday, and Kenzie was, she had a little bit of diarrhea, which is unusual for her, she's, she's eight years old, she has been such the healthiest dog, but I thought, oh, she's a lab after all, and she's probably eaten something. And uh, Monday night, no, Tuesday night it was, she came to work with me on Tuesday and she wasn't right. She just wasn't right. It might have been Monday. Anyway, whichever day it was, they all blur into each other. Uh, and four o'clock, one of the mornings, she woke me up. Oh, I'd been up several times during the night to take her to the toilet. She obviously had bad tummy. And four o'clock in the morning, I tried to take her. She got me up again and I tried to get her to go to the toilet, she couldn't walk down the steps, her back legs kept collapsing and she, they just kept falling down and she couldn't hold herself up and oh she looked terrible and I thought oh oh my gosh she's actually really sick. So I <laughs> rang my partner, I woke him up, oh, oh, oh Kenzie's really sick, what do I do? And she, he said ring your niece because she works at a vet's. I thought, Never thought to ring the vet's. <laughs> so poor old Brittany rang Brits. Hello, I'm looking at this And she went, oh, hello. She said, ring the vets. <laughs> Why I didn't ring the vets first, I don't know. But, you know, when sometimes you don't think very clearly in those situations. So my, the vets were amazing. 4.30, 4 they were here. Um, house call, a nurse and a vet, 4.30 in the morning. God bless them. Because Kenzie couldn't even get up. Uh, she was really sick. And yeah, they so they, they noticed congestion in her heart, congestion in her lungs. Uh, she obviously had chronic diarrhea, and she was dehydrated. So they took her off on a gurney. It was, I mean, she's my third child, but also I'm so dependent on her, you know. And she's dependent on me too. We we've got such a linked 
vibe because of her being uh, you know she's my working dog she's never away from me she's never even out of the same room as me and if she is she's with Stuart or a family member uh, so I felt like I'd had my arm cut off she spent the day in the vets in the vets they found she had an enlarged heart so they put her on a drip and they gave her some gastro stuff uh, it just was really tough I, you're really tough I I just, I was tired anyway with all of that busy stuff and then this happened. Thankfully, long story short, the tests came back and she does have a wee large, larger heart than normal. She does have some funny noises in her lungs, but nothing that they wouldn't put more than contribute to an, being an older dog. Sorry, Ken's, if you're listening. Um, and her diarrhea has stopped with medication. So, and the test results came back all good. So, all we can put it down to is either she'd eaten something really, really bad, and God knows where she would have got that, because we're pretty strict on that. We lost a lovely farm dog quite a few years ago from rat poisoning, and we just, you know, we're, we're very strict on that. Um, Learn by experience. Um, or she's got some sort of infection that... Yeah, but anyway, she's well now. She's had some very quiet days. She was very, very quiet. Uh, that was early last week. It's Monday today, and today's probably the first day where she's kind of been a bit happy, and uh, she's still a bit slow on it, I suppose. Um, I did notice when I came into town, because I stayed at home for the weekend, and I'm back house-sitting again. Oh, you really are getting the story, aren't you? Um, she was shaking in the taxi, so I have no idea what that was about, whether it was anxiety or, I don't know what that was about, I just can't, I can't work it out, you know, but anyway, she's well again, just a bit quiet, but what it did mean is I had, I was able, I needed to step off the treadmill of life anyway, because I was tired from a hectic month, um, and then Kenzie, so last week and this weekend I've done nothing nothing but have the fire going, knit and watch podcasts and just have a really chilled week in a bit. And so my plan is to do that again today, but talk to you guys and uh, back to work tomorrow. So yeah, we'll see, you know, we'll see how the week goes tomorrow. But yeah, that's my long story about Kenzie. It is a knitting podcast, my humble apologies, but she's my fair child. You know, <laughs> you're my friends. I needed to talk. Just drinking good old gumboot tea today. Uh, yeah. So, finished objects. I had a rotary. And, oh, I'm sorry, I should have forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. Oh, duh. I'll never change. 62 and I'm just damn I who I am. Um, so I'm a Rotarian and we wanted to celebrate Bastille Day, which was the 14th of June, 17th of June, July, I should say, 14th or 17th, humble apologies, I should have had that written down. Uh, so we had a Bastille Day and so I made a, a beret, a wee 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 beret to wear to the Bastille Day because uh, I did have one, I do have one, but I, I can't, can't find it. Anyway, I've always wanted to knit a beret anyway, so it was a good opportunity to, uh, I had finished my a, a jersey recently and it was a nice little palette cleanser. Super easy to knit, uh, so I, it, and it was a free pattern, I can't even tell, tell you, I will link it below, but honestly if you go free pattern and beret, you'll just gazillions of them so it was a really simple one I just used some old wool that I had which is stunning wool that I've knit something else in before it's a hundred percent alpaca and I thought well that'll be lovely but I do know that alpaca stretches and I didn't want it to go all floppy and stretchy so I had some um, FOMO I think I talked about this last one so apologies if you hear it getting it again FOMO fake um, mohair which is 100% acrylic and so I mixed the two together and I thought well that'll keep it quite stable and so that it's not going to stretch so much it's quite weighty but yeah isn't it cute and I even did the little crocheted little bit on the top <laughs> that you have um, I'm not really a hat person but every now and then they're quite handy so um, yeah just wear it wee 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 or I don't wear it as the French do on the side but I just wear it 
bit like a like a um, slouchy cap and yeah but it was fun wearing it for Bastille Day it was fun I have a friend who's French uh, she's just come over from France with her husband and now living here and she came and spoke at Rotary for us and we all wore be uh, berets and uh, some, of, some, of, some of them had striped jerseys and of course she said oh you know she spoke and she had a presentation which was fantastic and uh, she said uh, you know that we us French don't wear berets and striped tops and we're all sitting there with our <laughs> berets and striped tops on but hey ho that's um the navy they're st still doing the military but that was a bit of fun and that's my finished object so I've had so much time to knit and my so let's get into my whips I have been knitting as you know and I've talked about this before what's called the braids of grass and I'm, I am not going to say the designer's name because I do not want to mess it up it is a challenging name and but I will link it below it's uh, I saw a podcaster Ellie uh, with it on and I thought I'm gonna make one of those so I started it I showed it to the I was up to just up to the bodice when I showed you I and now have uh, three quarters of a sleeve done three quarters of the other sleeve done and the bottom done so I'm ready to finish the lengths of the sleeves ready to finish the bottom uh, it's such a lovely colour, it's very similar to this, and it is Skeins, so this is Skeins wool, but it's a Skeins Vintage Abroad 10 ply, so it is a little bit bulkier than this. What I have done as a mistake, <laughs> you know, typical Donna, there's got to be a mistake somewhere, is last time I did my podcast, I put it on those cables to um, show you, and to try it on, and... When I put it off the cables and started knitting, I was up to here, which is where you start dividing, dividing to bring those cables out like that. I started here and got a little way down and got to here. I thought, oh, this is, this is opening up really nicely because I did think it was quite, quite firm up here. Uh, but I got to the end of the cables and I and I thought, no, what are, why is it opening up so nicely? It turns out that I had put <laughs> the wrong needles on. Uh, but I actually really like the the fabric that's coming out. It's, it's quite loose, it's a bit open, it's lovely and bouncy, and so I'm really enjoying it. So this will will uh, block up, so it's going to sit up like that, and then it comes out into these cool cables that disappear. And so the bottom and the bottom of the sleeves have you knit right down until you get to the end and then you just do one cable so you'll have that sort of that sort of bottom on the bottom as well which will be quite cool um i'm quite looking forward to this it's not far off finishing because i sat and just chomped this out last week while i was sitting podcasting and sitting with my feet up by the fire resting so i am really looking forward to this and i've yeah, it is going to be bigger and, and uh, more open than I had originally thought, but I am I'm loving the fabric, so I'm not going to change. Now my issue is, it's a very hungry beast, and it's eaten a lot of wool. And that's why I've done one sleeve not finished, one sleeve not finished, bottom not finished, because I wasn't sure whether I was going to make it and whether I had to buy more wool. So I've got a 19-inch... Um, albatross span <laughs> uh, for underarm and I'm also 19 inch down on my length of my body so I've done those and they're both 11 inches so I've got eight inches to go to finish and I've got three skeins left so I don't know that took so what I did is knit the sleeve until I finished a whole skein so that 11 inches took exactly a skein but I, my worry is that I'll get to do the cable at the bottom, which will be hungry, because cables do eat a lot of fabric. And I just don't know if I'm going to make it. So I don't know if I'm going to order more wool or not. Um, I thought one of, my, one of my missions this afternoon is to go on Skein's website. Skein's is a, um, a big mill and yarn selling store in uh, Napier. That is a, I'm in the lower 
North Island of New Zealand and they are up higher in the island and so I'll go on their website and see if I can get any more. It's commercial so it's not indie dyed so I may well be lucky but I did buy it in a big special. We'll see. If I can get some more I, I think I'll order another skeiner just so that I can take a breath and you know know that I'm going to finish it okay. Uh, but that's my mission this afternoon. Really happy with that. Loving the cables, loving the fabric. Cool colour, very similar to this, I have to say. But I brought it, this was, uh, Skeins had a massive sale. I think they even call it their annual massive clear out sale or something. And I know, I knew that I liked this vintage wool because I've knit one, two, three. This must be my fourth or fifth. I've knit in the vintage wool. I'll just start taking shares and skeins. <laughs> but um, I had no intention of buying wool, but they had this massive sale on, and it was buy 10 skeins for $50 or something. So it's $5 a skein, and it's normally about 8 or 9 And so I jumped at it. Uh, so I bought enough for this for my jersey. Oh, well, supposedly enough. And uh, I bought enough for a jersey for my partner, Stuart. I'm going to knit him the anchor my boyfriend's anchor jersey so uh, and I've got his in a lovely sort of stone color which I'll show you later I'm going to do it very similar to that I'm just going to do the nice anchor jersey uh, and he's he's shorter than me he's got short he is shorter in height but he's also shorter in the arm and body length so I will have enough for him but I am pushing it to the limit for that one <laughs> uh, but excited about that one and I am doing it now on a six Point five needle instead of a 5.5 needle <laughs> which is what it was supposed to be on it was supposed to be on 4.5 for up here and 5.5 for the body and I'd obviously done 5.5 till I got to here and then for some reason and I do I think I'm pretty sure I know why because I had 6.5s in another bag um, oh it's in I, I love these bags too in my Eskdale which is up in Napier cool little uh, bag. It's got all sorts of little knitters on it, um, all in their woolen jerseys. So um, that's from Eskdale. Uh, so I had, I've got two of these. One with these on, and one which I'll show you later with sheep on it. I think I pulled the the needles for the work that I was doing in the other bag out to put back on instead of out of this bag. So I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Uh, yeah, anyway, hey ho, it's worked out in the long run, so it's just going to be a little bit boxery and bigger, but it's not boxier and bigger, it's an official term, uh, but it's going to have a um, fabric that I really like, so it's all worked out. You know, that's the thing with knitting, you can make and create, and, and if it turns out a slightly different shape, well that's the shape it was supposed to be, you know, nobody knows, <laughs> unless they know the pattern, and then you say, oh, I modified it, this is a mod. <laughs> anyway. Another, another drink before I go to my next whip. I would say I would have that jersey done hopefully hopefully this week, maybe after next weekend. As I say, I've only got the two sleeves and bottom to do. So my next whip is la -ti -da -ti -da. Oh, socks. There we go. Socks. This is just a little bag, little pence case slash makeup bag that I bought from the warehouse, which is one of our big outlets here. Uh, I haven't done a lot of work on these because I've been concentrating on that. Uh, my sister's house is lovely, but it is a an older home. Oh, po, drop some stitches. It is a um, we live in a, a we built our own house, so we we live in a modern house with double glazing, and this is it's been lovely staying here. I've really enjoyed being in town because I can have visitors and friends and family, which you don't normally do when you're out in the country. You're kind of a little bit more isolated. Having said that, I love that too. But it's been a novelty. I feel like I've had a holiday. But uh, it is an older home, so it is darker. So, uh, and this is quite dark wool. So uh, I, I've just started the heel flap on these socks, which is just the nine inch vanilla Crazy Sock Ladies patterns, nine inch circulars. And I was doing it on a circular needle. Uh, with I, I was doing a, a three, three one rib. And I'm doing the, this is the first time, but I'm doing heel flap on a DPNs, uh, which I'm finding much easier actually. So that may well be my uh, MO. 
so when I finish that I'll just put them back on my nine inch circs and finish the rest of them. This wool I've talked about before, it's called Gallipoli, it's a New Zealand wool, it's 100%, no it's not, it's um, 85 or something percent pure wool and nylon sock wool and it was brought out to the whatever, whenever you buy wool you donate, they put a percentage towards return soldiers, so um, I've knit a blue pair, a lie, not blue, Re uh, I wore them yesterday. What colour are they? Sort of burgundy, same thing. Uh, but these are, you know, I'm learning because I'm still on my sock journey. I've decided to settle down and not do my Stephen West ones till summer. I figured why put pressure on myself because summer I'll be able to see better, it'll be better light. Um, they're a smaller garment, so you don't. And I, at the moment, I'm just loving knitting jerseys. So um, I've talked about that before. I've signed up to do a Stephen West's. Um, a sock a month thing for the year, went the year of knitting socks, and I, so I still get all the patterns, um, but I, all I've done is a cuff. <laughs> anyway, I, yeah, I've decided to put that aside, not put pressure on myself until the summer, because I'll be able to see. But these I will get back into just to do as in my, you know, little bit of when I need, need a little break, I'm not in any urgency with those, but um, they're my socks, and they just sit in my little makeup bag and I just take them wherever and put them in my work bag. So that's whip number two. Um, I think that's the only whips. I've got one here. I want it to, I want it to be a whip. Um, as I was saying, I am really enjoying getting back into my jerseys, but I keep looking in my jersey pile and what I'm missing is more of these. More of the sort of sweatshirty type things that I can just put on and be comfortable in and just go. Um, you know, the other one that I'm knitting, my, my braids of grass here, etc. They're more of a, for my work jersey, so a little bit more, there's a little bit more to them, they're a little bit more structured. Uh, I can wear them with work pants or a work skirt, but these are, you know, I've, I've just got jeggings on and uh, below. So, you know, these are just easy and I, I want more of them. So I've been thinking about this wool that I bought when I last went over to Wollongong to see my son in Australia. And I bought this, um, I don't quite know how you say the word, sheep G's, and it's called Whirl. It's supposedly a four ply, but it actually looks more like a lace, um, a lace, it's quite thin, but I just bought it because I loved it. I didn't buy it with a plan. And then I thought, okay, I'll make a shawl. So I actually started casting on a shawl. Actually, haha, -ha, this is what 6.5 needles were. Ha 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 ha, there we go. Now I know where I got them from. Um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like, I was just doing garter stitch and I was just going to do a plain. It'd probably look rather pretty, but so I'm going to rip back. Now what I thought, and I don't know, I'd love some comments on this. So let me know what you think. I thought, oh, what I can do is I have 10 skeins of, this is from Skeins, undyed natural wool. So it's just a pure wool. I don't know if it's a, might be 80, 20, could be 80, 20, but I think it's actually 100% wool. It's just one of those ones that they sell indie dyers. It's beautiful. It's lovely and soft, and it's pure, 100% undyed wool. And I've got heaps of it. I've also got it in four ply, not just in ten ply, uh, eight ply. I think I quite like to put those two together and knit myself a sweatshirt. Uh, I think that this will this will be the comfort sweatshirt, just I, you know, pure wool thing that I'll enjoy, and this will just add the bam that I quite like. But I don't know what to do about the sleeves. <laughs> It's like, do I knit it in this and then the sleeves will be different? Because obviously I don't want to buy another two skeins for each of the sleeves so that the sleeves are the same. That's too expensive. Um, I'm only going to, my, my, my goal is to have a, a comfort jersey like this, although I still wear this to work as well. Uh, so it's not going to be fancy pantsy. So do I knit it and have the sleeves 
different with so whatever I get to and then knit the rest with the whatever's left in the sleeves and they'll be different you know it'll be variegated uh, or do I knit it and put plain sleeves I don't like that idea much or I really wanted a long sleeve sweatshirty type thing or I really love I don't know if you watch Craya Bayer um, her name Rebecca she's come out with the most beautiful can't remember what it's called, a tolster, I think it's called. It's a beautiful, just a round neck, although it almost looks square, t-shirt, short sleeve t-shirt, striped t-shirt, and it's just a in the round, raglan sleeve, short sleeve t-shirt. And I thought I could make that because the sleeve it, it, it would all come down and make meet to there, so there'd only be a little bit of sleeve where I could just use the end and that would match the end and the bottom. Um, but then I'm not getting my long sleeve. I'm so confused. Oh, decisions, decisions. Uh, but I love the idea of those two together. I love the idea that that would make this faded, cool jersey. But I don't know what to do about the sleeves. So I would love some comments and some feedback. So if you're watching and you think, oh, yeah, well, you should do this. Or why don't you try this? Or here's a great pattern. The pattern I'm thinking of doing I thought I was going to do was the lento because it's just plain basic but it's and it's only a 17 stitch gauge but it's four ply 17 stitch so you must do it on very big needles but I'm pretty sure if I got 17 stitches with this DK and this supposedly four ply but it looks like lace I could do 17 stitches yeah so I'd love your comments after you've liked subscribed comment <laughs> sound like a salesperson so that's my nearly whip I'm pretty sure I'm going to cast that on either this afternoon or tomorrow when I'm at my sister's because I'm here until Thursday they get back from Australia Thursday night uh, so I'm here till then and it's funny when you're in someone else's house you don't do the things like oh I must go and hang that washing out or I must go and sweep this or I must go and um you know, put this load of washing on, or I must strip that bed, or I must tidy that shelf. You don't do any of that because you're in someone else's house. So you go, oh, basically all I have to do is check the fire's going, enjoy sitting here and knitting and feed their dog Bailey and my dog, obviously, and bed. So, you know, you don't have to worry about any of the bedrooms or anything like that. So, I mean, obviously I'll clean up before they get home. There's not much to clean when you're on your own. So it's it's actually been like a true holiday. I feel like I've been in a batch at the beach. It's been wet enough to feel like it's been at the beach. Uh, I feel like I've been in a batch and I've just had a, stepped off the treadmill and had this wonderful break aside from Kenzie's illness. So what are we up to? Uh, that's my whips. Just check my bags. Make sure I haven't got any more whips on the go to show. Uh, no, but I do have, this is my planned knitting, uh, although I did start it and I uh, haven't, uh, haven't decided, no, I haven't really decided, decided. One of the, like, we had knitting club, so knitting group, we have two, I've got two knitting groups that I go to, which I'm really lucky about. I've got Y Knit, which is our big one that we meet once a month, and that's the one that we put together the, the knitting retreat, pardon me, and we're going to try and make that an annual event and so we're going to work on that so why knit is once a month um, and there was a lovely lady that's been coming Patricia and she's been cleaning out some of her stash I believe her stash is quite a considerable stash and so she bought a pile of wool to give away to all us lovely ladies so we all had a look around and <coughs> picked out what we want and so I got three one three one of these so I got this one which uh, so I can't, oh, and it does have, how, this is how wonderful she was. The tags are on pieces of paper. The tag is in here somewhere. I can't find the tag now, but it is in there for this one. Uh, and it, it's variegated. Oh, pinks, it's my colours. It's an eight ply. Uh, look at this, with this. Hey, isn't that nice? So I got that one. 
I got this one again. It is it's a skeins. <laughs> I thought that was a, I thought that was a skeins. I could feel it. This is a skeins as well. It's another DK. Uh, gorgeous colours. Oh, it's all balled up and everything. That's really pretty. It's kind of got um, mint, minty, smoky mint and smoky pink. Again, my colour viol. <laughs> and this one, which I just loved, is... Which I've got needles ready to cast on. Uh, isn't that beautiful? That, I'm worried about how dark it is for my sight. But I just love that. And that is spectacular with this. It's just made to be. So I'm going to use this one first. It is a skeins as well. So she must like the skeins as well. You can't beat skeins all. Well, you can. There's some stunning ones out there. So I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. I am going to make with that, with one of those. Where's my pattern? Those are my boots. Oh, I had it out, I was so organised. Oh, you know, I probably had it out at home, not here. Anyway, can't find it now, but I am going to make Andrea Maori's, Drea Renee, Nuts, um, shawl, a uh, cowl. So she does a cowl like a bandana cowl. I've tried a bandana cowl before, and it, I felt like it looked like a bib. So I, <laughs> so I, ripped it back, I frogged it. But this one of hers is done, you knit it on the against the grain sort of um, horizontally and it's got a little bit of texture to it and the knitting. I haven't actually read the pattern thoroughly so I don't quite know what the texture is but it looks like a slip stitch or something or a broken rib or something. And it's bigger than the one I tried so, so it sits like this, it'll sit my gut, my plan is that it'll sit like this. So I'm going to cast on that Andrea, Andrea's, um, and I'm afraid I can't forget, even remember what it's called. That's going to be lovely and soft too. Look out, look at the drape on that. That's what somebody told me. If it sits up like that, it's, it's a firm wall. If it sits down like that, it's got a good drape. Don't think phallic now, now, now. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Think of wool. Uh, so. That's what I'm going to do. So that's going to be my, I quite like to have a shawl on the go because I live in shawls and scarves and things. And now that my temperature, body control temperature seems to have been changing, I can get back and having fun with them again. I've, I've, you know, I have really missed not wanting, not being able to wear my shawls and scarves because of my heat problems. So that's there. Oh, do it. Here we go. Look at that. So that's Andrea. Renee Knits with her cowl, and it is called DRK Everyday Cowl. It couldn't get much easier than that, and so I'm going to cast that on, and I'm just going to have that as one of those fun little jobs, not not job, fun little projects that can just sit there and I can just pick up whenever. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other two skeins. Uh, I'm thinking maybe a. I really would like to do a. Uh, is it Goldstein, Goldstar, Goldstein, um, Fear, um, oh my gosh, I'm starting to lose my words again, Colour Work, and Steingas, that's it, I really want to do a Steingas co uh, Colour Work, she's got some stunning patterns, and I quite like using Feral different colours, the tonal, uh, not tonal, the Feral flecked and flecked ones, for the colour work. So it may be that these turn out to be some sort of colour in some sort of colour work. But thank you, Patricia. That was a very kind gift. So appreciated. Right, where are we at? It's been a busy knitting time, I have to say. Well, I've had plenty, nothing else to do, which has been, I've made myself. I've actually cleared the decks to be able to do it. Which is probably my mental health tip. It's so important. Your health is your wealth. And I was feeling tired and burnt out. And then when those things happened with Kenzie, I um, did cope. You know, you do. You get on. You just adrenaline just gets you going and cortisol and makes you do. But cortisol is such a dangerous 
hormone to have in your body when you had too much and I, I felt like I had so much adrenaline and cortisol rolling around in my body that I needed to get rid of and I just needed down I just needed time I needed to I, I've always meditated I've always done breath work and breathing exercises I've always needed I'm an introvert so I do get I love people's company but I do get drained by it I do need to fill my battery quietly and I felt my battery was really low and needed to fill um, and so maybe that's what you know we can talk about so that we talk about introverts and extroverts <laughs> sorry I think I don't think you can see that but hopefully it'll go away um, we talk about introverts and extroverts a lot and you know people kind of think an introvert is someone who's quiet and shy and it, and it can be and some of that is or out there I'm ah, sort of as an extrovert and that can be too but in the mental health world we talk about introverts and extroverts differently so an extrovert is someone who like, loves people loves getting out there loves the connections with people and gets energized by that so they fill their battery with being with people um, my daughter's a great example she just you know she, she, and my sister's the same they they their batteries get filled by people and being in that with people introverts are different introverts which is myself introverts are people who love company love that connection with people and I do love being with people and being but it does take energy from my battery to do, to do that and I need time, quiet downtime, to be able to fill my battery, to be able to do it again. Um, my partner and I have talked about that a lot because he's an extrovert. He needs people to fill his battery. So when I've spent all day with people at work and I want to come home and I want to spend very downtime to fill my battery, he's been on his own all day on the farm. He wants to be with people and do stuff and fill his battery. And so it's like, um, yeah, we're incongruent in that, and, and we've, you know, 20 years we've been together, so we've talked it through, we just understand each other, he now knows and understands that I've got to have that downtime, I've got to have that, and it, for me that downtime has to be real quiet downtime, you know, it is right back to breath work and meditation and quiet time, it is right back to that, right back to the basics. Uh, and I've learned that I have to do that to cope. And he know he now knows that. Hey Bailey, come for a pat. Where you go? Good girl. That's enough. Um, it's my it's my um. What would she be to me? She's my fur niece. <laughs> Looking at me like, oh, you come to play. Um. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so uh, whereas Stuart, and the funny thing with that is. Uh, when I got home on Friday from being at Trudy's all day on my own and, and having that wonderful down quiet time, I was feeling still needing it and just come back home to, to keep completing it. And Stuart's saying, oh, hi, how's it been? What should we do? Who should we go and see? What should we do? There's, um, you know, if, uh, the neighbours have got a leg of venison on and, and I'm like, oh, I, I love my neighbours and I, I think they're wonderful people, but I just need my me time. I've just had all of this with Kenzie and I just needed downtime and he and I said but you go so we literally <laughs> trains and, uh, but we understand you know and and then the, uh, the next morning he was able to go yak 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 and he'd had a filled battery and had spent time with people and filled his filled his battery up and I'd had this downtime and I was quiet and my battery was full and we, we were on a much more congruent uh, place so if you're an introvert or an extrovert, just be aware of what you need and be aware of what the other people around you are because even extroverts that look like extroverts can be introverts. Just because I'm an introvert and love that down and need that downtime doesn't mean I don't love being with people and sort of having that time with people. Yeah, so there we go. There's your mental health talk today. Introverts and extroverts. What else? What I did I have to talk about? Bailey has knocked my notebook off, and I don't even know where it's gone now. There it is. There it is. Let's check my notebook and see what I wrote down. I tried to be organised. Uh, oh, yarn swap. Yeah, I'm uh, in um, Truly Myrtle's wardrobe toolbox, which is a New Zealand knitter designer here. 
and you pay a monthly subscription. You can do it if you're anywhere in the world. You can do it in your wardrobe toolbox. You pay a monthly subscription and she has master classes and patterns and um, knit nights and I've learned so much in it. It's been absolutely fantastic. But what she did do recently is called Yarn Swap. So if you were interested in being part of this Yarn Swap, you gave her all your details or gave her, her administration people all her details and uh, she matched you up. So I decided I would quite like to do that. So I've been matched up with a lady in Australia and I've sent my Yarn Swap off. I'm hoping she sent hers to me. So uh, we, you have to give them uh, some yarn that is more than 100 grams. So a hank you know, of yarn. And a, a trinket or a notion or something that's relevant to in your area. I'm not going to say what I've put in mine till later because uh, it's a surprise. And if this lovely lady in Queensland is watching me, I don't want her to know what it is till she's opened it so i'll you know talk about that next time but that was that's quite fun yeah i really like that my dear friend yvonne has given me a dishcloth again the same as vicky who did last week i really appreciate it love knitted dishcloths but i also appreciate a gift that's been made uh, by hand so thank you yvonne that was wonderful and truly appreciated and it's being used as we speak <laughs> i do love knitted dishcloths um, I took the Grandies to Barbie yesterday. You know the movie? Yeah, yeah, I know. Stuart had that look. Stuart went, oh, Barbie. <laughs> but I quite enjoyed it. So I do, I recommend it. It's not a 10, I have to say. You know, for one being pretty bloody awful and 10 being excellent. I would say it's probably a 7, 8. I had a laugh. I had some times when I just relaxed and got into the story. It had some ad adult content in it that was political and um, relevant and around mental health that went over my grandchildren's heads. But it is a PG, so it does need parents' guidance because there's a bit of violence and swearing in it. I know, Barbie, who's to, who says? But I do recommend it. You know, go, go with an open mind. Take it for what it is. There was a couple of times when it was a bit naff and I thought oh this is naff but it's Barbie so you had to have some of that yeah. Ryan Gosling excellent I uh, can't remember the young woman's name who was Barbie stunning beautiful Barbie um, but yeah that was yeah good movie good movie but not excellent movie um, I was my partner wants to go and see the open Hyman 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 and I'd quite like to follow the story but Stuart likes to go, say he likes to go to the movies and never does, so I can't see that happening, but there we go. Um, and I am reading, I talked about this book last podcast, I bought a couple of books on knitting, and I bought, I've bought, one that I bought is called uh, The Power of Knitting, and it is by Loretta Napoleone, and I have read it twice, I have really enjoyed it. Um, it's uh, she's an economist or was an economist who had some tragedy in her life but was also an avid knitter and she had a tragedy come in her life and recognised the importance of the knitting to get her through that difficult time and so she started writing a book about knitting but she's looked at it from an economic point of view in historical terms like um, the woman that used to knit by the guillotine in France would knit uh, things to sell and then after all of the uh, beheadings had happened they would then sell their wares so the economic stories around uh, how knitting has you know the fishermen and those sorts of things um, so that was really interesting she talked about mental health and the dementia and the benefits around that and in a really academic way but she's used her story to follow you along in a wonderful way as well so I super, super recommend that book. That's definitely a, a 10 for me. Uh, so again, it is Power of Knitting by Loretta Napo Napole um, Napoleone. Um, yeah, highly recommend. So that's a book that I've read. My Birkin, my Birkin, my Birkin, my dear Birkin, which I have 
I can't wait to wear. I talked about considerably in the last podcast. I'm not going to go through it again. But because of my sight challenges, it just got too difficult now. A lovely friend of mine in my knitting group, Vicky, has, God bless you, Vicky, if you're watching, thank you so much, has offered to finish it for me. I had three inches on one sleeve to finish and one sleeve on the other to finish. So one, one and a bit sleeves to go to finish it. And I just couldn't do it with my sight. To, um, yeah, too dark just wasn't happening and I was getting very demoralized by it so thank you Vicky she's also offered to uh, knit some socks for me because I like my wool socks and I wanted a couple of dark pairs some black ones and some red ones and god bless you I really appreciate getting to meet you and and becoming a friend and certainly now supporting me like this uh, so what else what else what else Oh, podcasts, my two podcasts, so I've watched two podcasts, new podcast, one new podcast, and one was an old one who hasn't been on for months, um, Jonathan Days, I'm not sure if any of you have watched him, so Jonathan Days is a young guy in London, and he is a prolific knitter, and I just like him, I just like his his energy and I love what he knits he's done a lot of knits that I would do myself uh, particularly like the anchor was one that we both did in fact it was I think he was one of the ones that I thought yep I'm gonna knit that for my partner because it looked really good on a man uh, and I really enjoyed him and he has been on for months and months and months and I was think, keep thinking oh, I wonder where that Jonathan is well he turned up so I watched Jonathan yesterday so just a nice podcast uh, with a nice energy um, bit bright, crisp, fresh, fresh sort of energy, really cool. And the other one that I've started watching, which I've really enjoyed, again, is an American couple. I think they're from the south. Can't remember whereabouts, but certainly from the south. And they're called the Fruitful Hands, and it's a mother and daughter. And I've really enjoyed them too. They've got a lovely connection with each other, and they jest with each other, and it's just a lovely mother daughter thing. They both knit. And they knit what I would wear. So, you know, everything they've knit, it's like, yes, I could wear that. Yes, I would make that. So I've thoroughly enjoyed those two as well. So just my recommendations for a couple of podcasts uh, that I have really enjoyed. I think that's it. I think that's enough. I am now going to put some wood on the fire, answer those annoying phone calls that have come through over there that uh, I forgot to put Do Not Disturb on and respond to those. And uh, I'm going to put my feet up and I'm going to knit all afternoon. I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, kakite and see you again and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.